Good morning, Facebook. I'm Erie Times News online reporter Sarah Grafsky. We are here right behind the Erie Maritime Museum. As you can see, the beautiful U.S. Brig Niagara right behind us. I am with its captain, Billy Sabatini, this morning. So we are going to be giving you a live tour of the Niagara. But before we do that, um, we are going to be kind of taking a quick sneak peek of the Letty G. Howard. So the Letty G. Howard is a schooner that got here on Sunday. So, um, so much exciting, so many exciting things happening here behind the Erie Maritime Museum. So um, we'll give you a quick look over there. Before we do that, I would like to tell you guys that we have Erie Times News Photography Supervisor Christopher Millette who is manning and monitoring the camera. Um, he will be fielding your comments. So um, please feel free if you have comments or questions for Billy, um, please chime in and, and we'll try to get those answered as best we can. So um, Billy, let's talk about the schooner. Let's talk about the Letty G. Howard first. Give us a little background on it. Sure, so Letty G. Howard uh, is a uh, Fredonia class schooner. Uh, she was built in Essex, Massachusetts uh, the, in 1893. Uh, so the, the ship got here, like you said, on Sunday. Uh, it was a 2,000 mile voyage that they did to wow. get here, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the crew actually got a couple days off, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, they were <laughs> back at work uh, yesterday. Uh, but the, the, the ship has been owned by the South Street Seaport Museum in New York uh, for the past 50 years. Uh, before that, she uh, fished out of Pensacola in Florida, on uh, the Gulf of Mexico, going for a uh, red snapper. Uh, before that, she was fishing off of George's Bank, off of New England. Uh, and that was her whole mission and her whole reason for existing was being a fishing schooner. That's awesome. You know, so it's she's a little bit smaller than the, the really big fishing schooners that went out to the Grand Banks, so off of Newfoundland. Okay. So you have, you know, the Grand Bank schooners or the, you know, Blue Nose, Ernestina, these are really, really big uh, ships. And then you had the Fredonia class, which was the smaller that we had asked you beforehand is what's the difference between like the brig and a schooner, a brig and a schooner? All right, so both ships have two masts, okay? Uh, and the way it works is a brig is a two-masted square rig sailing vessel. So right behind us here we have Niagara. So Niagara has your two masts right there, the main and the four. And the square sails, which are on the yards, which are the big pieces of wood that go across the ship, are what makes Niagara a square rigger, which what makes uh, her a brig because a brig is a square rig sailing vessel. Okay. Now on a schooner, you still have sails, but they're in line with the ship. Okay. So they're parallel to the center line of the ship, which means uh, those are four and a half sails. Uh, so the schooner has the four and a half sails, the brig has the square sails. Okay. So why don't we take a trip down? We'll go take a look at the Letty, and you can kind of tell me a little bit more about her. Um, I know that she's going to be here through 2019, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the plan is that we'll we'll have the ship here for at least two years, okay. but we could go up to maybe five years. And people, what what kind of public access will she have? Like, so, can people go on day sales kind of thing? They can. So the the main schedule for Betty over the course of the next you know few months um, is going to be start off at nine to twelve. We'll be open for deck tours. So anyone comes down to the Maritime Museum, I uh, can come through and get a tour of the ship. Uh, and then from 1 until 3 every day, uh, she'll be sailing with the summer camp. So oh, we have the, nice. the tall ship uh, summer camp that we're running yeah. uh, for the 10 to 14 year olds. Uh, then we have a public day sail from 4 until 5.30. Okay. Uh, and then a sunset sail every night. Oh, from, awesome. From uh, 7 to 11, about 9. So if somebody like wants to book one of those, they would just call the Maritime Museum? Yep, they go right to our website and everything's right going to be right there. All right, so tell let's tell me a little bit about the ship. You know, now that people can actually see the ship, <laughs> yep. tell me a little bit about what we're looking at. All right, so obviously this is a uh, a working schooner, uh, which is which is a good thing. Uh, so we have you know Niagara, the the big grand navy ship, and then you have you have Letty, which is the the working fishing schooner. So the, the masts look a little bit different. They're just oiled, or actually it's something we call slush. Uh, so it's a mixture of uh, linseed oil, Vaseline, tar, all kinds of stuff that keeps that mast looking wet all the time. Okay. Uh, so the, because here, the sails are attached to a boom and a gaff. Okay. Gaff is the big piece of wood on top. And we hoist that up every single time we set the sail. Oh, wow. So that's, that's a little bit different than you're talking about a schooner. Uh, so. You know, we paint these ones, these ones we slush. Uh, and then, uh, what's also a lot different about a schooner and this ship is that there's way, there's so many fewer sails. So here we have right. four lowers, 
So you have the jib, the jumbo, the four, and the main. And in Niagara, there is 15 sails. And Letty, there is only six. So it's a huge difference in that. Uh, also, Letty's 125 feet, Niagara's 198. Wow. So the difference there, and she's 90 feet tall, whereas Niagara's 120 feet tall. So Niagara is definitely a much bigger ship, right? Uh, but we wanted a smaller vessel so we can uh, have something that's, that people can go out and go sailing on. Um, and we can do these shorter sails too. Right, right, right. So tell me a little, like how did how did she come here? Like how did you get Letty to come here? <laughs> so the, uh, the conversation started actually uh, the summer of 2016 okay. is when we started uh, the discussions with the South Street Seaport Museum. Okay. Uh, and then it kind of went away for a little while and we started talking about it again. And the, the, the major thing that happened was they wanted the ship to be used. Okay. We wanted to use the ship. Right. Uh, so we set up this programmatic collaboration where we operate the ship, they still uh, own the ship, and we can have something really cool right here and here. Right. So it, it kind of worked out in that sense. Uh, it took a while to do all the negotiations, make sure everything was uh, set up the way it should be set up, uh, and then we sign, the, sign the dotted line, and, and we'll for the next two years. Um, tell us a little bit about, like, did, will you guys, so Letty's going to be here this summer, next summer, will you guys continue to, to, to kind of seek out, like, different vessels and, and such? Yes. Yeah, so we always want to have another ship here, and we also have to be thinking about, uh, after the 2019 season, we're most likely going to be rebuilding Niagara. Okay. Uh, so Niagara will be out of service for at least one full year. Yeah. So we won't be sailing at all the summer of 2020. Oh no. So we need to find a replacement ship for Niagara right. in all of our programs. Right. So we're hoping that a combination of maybe Letty and maybe a couple other ships, mm -hmm. we can maintain all of our programs. Right. So it, it's possible that she would stay here longer than 2019, just through 2019 then? Yeah, we're hoping okay. to keep her for five years. Okay. All right. Great. So there's just an appetite, I mean, there's an appetite for vessels like this. People just want to, are curious and they just want to know, you know, that history and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the space shuttle showing up in your backyard. <laughs> I mean, you look at the way these things are. I yeah. Mean, these just don't exist right. in sort of everyday life. Right. This is a, such a unique, sort of interesting thing that we have, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, Niagara and people are... In Erie, people are very much used to Niagara. Yeah, right. You know, it's, it's, it's the backdrop of everything we do mm -hmm. in the city. Mm -hmm. But now we have something else to enhance all of that. Mm -hmm. And the, the big thing for me is I want to I want to see the Bayfront, see the Bayfront change. Mm -hmm. And I want people to look at the water as a destination. I want people to come down here and enjoy Presque Isle Bay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ticket to sailing on this boat is only $25. That's amazing. So $25, you go for an hour, an hour and a half out of the bay. So where, like, you go, you circle the bay, basically, that's what the trip is, or? Yeah, I mean, it's all going to be weather dependent, mm -hmm. uh, but for right now, we're planning on doing most of the sails in the bay. Okay. So it's, I don't know, I've been sitting down at, uh, you know, Rum Runners or the Yacht Club, and I was talking about this in the news, too. <laughs> but it's, you're sitting there, every single night, there's going to be a schooner sailing by. That's amazing. I mean, how cool is yeah. that, that, that image? Right. And also, in expanding our sail training programs by doing the Tall Ship Summer Camp, uh, you know, there's going to be so much more happening on the water. And in my whole goal is to really create uh, Erie as being the, the center of sail training really for the country. And I want to get more and more ships coming in into Erie, but also I want to see these ships based out of Erie, but right. they sail everywhere in the world. Right. And that's kind of go vibing off of that you know, Tall Ships 2019, is yes. that right? Okay. Uh, so the brig will be participating. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that those kind of festivals hopefully attract more attention to exactly what you were just talking about. They do. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to have another 10 ships here. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually just starting the process of figuring out what ships are going to actually going to be coming next year. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because we go through this, we actually had a meeting up in Buffalo, let's see, it was about a month ago. Okay. With all the potential ships, all the ports, and we're going to be doing all the uh, uh, different tall ships festivals uh -huh. all over the Great Lakes. So, yeah. There's going to be some really new, cool, interesting things going on. Uh, we can't wait to hear. Yeah, so. let's head toward... So now we are going to be giving you guys kind of a live tour. So we know that you're excited that the Letty G. Howard is here, but we love the U.S. Brig Niagara. It's eerie, like Billy said. So we're going to be giving you a live tour, um, just kind of a sneak peek of what you could potentially find here on the U.S. Brig Niagara. Um, while we're walking, Billy, talk to us about... Um, 
um, what kind of access, public access, you shared with us the Letty, but what kind of public access will people have to the brig this summer? So Niagara's going to be uh, in and out pretty much the uh, the entire summer. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's actually all on our website in the calendar. It says what days are the ship is available for tours. Oh, great. And what days we're going to be out sailing. Uh, the uh, We're actually just starting yesterday uh, a program with a bunch of high school students. That's what all those people are That's over there amazing. in their uh, immersion suits. Okay. Uh, and then we leave on Monday and we gone for about, uh, I think it's about 20 days. Uh, then back in Erie for a week, then gone for 10, then back in Erie. So we're, we're back and forth all summer long. Okay. What are some of the, like, cool, what are some of the locations? Like, where does the brig go when you say, like, back and out? <laughs> so we're going out to Putin Bay first. Okay. Uh, so Putin Bay is going to be, uh, let's see, on the 19th we're going to be there. Uh, then we go back to Putin Bay the following weekend. Okay. Uh, Putin Bay is kind of like our second home. Okay. Uh, mainly because of the, you know, the historical aspect of that. Right. I mean, that's where the Battle of Lake Erie happened. Right, right, right. So we spent a lot of time, you know, sort of in Putin Bay. Right. Uh, we're also going to be going to Sandusky. Okay. It's the bicentennial of Sandusky. So I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. tell us what we're doing right now. We are... All right, so you just walked uh, across the brow. And come down here in the main deck, and what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, actually, I'll bring you aft first. Okay. And I'll show you where we steer the ship and that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you had to guess how many sails you've taken on her, what, how oh, many? Wow. <laughs> it's probably, what, in the thousands? Hundreds yeah, I think thousands? I've, so I've been sailing here for 14 years. Yeah. And we average mm -hmm. anywhere from 80 to 100 sails a year, so I've probably been like a thousand days in Niagara. That's Amazing. Is it's every really cool. sale different? Or oh like... yeah, absolutely. Okay. No, every single day is different because the weather conditions change, the people you have on the ship change, right. the crew can be different. Okay. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of different things that change uh, day to day. Okay. So, and every day you get underway, it's usually a pretty good time. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So we'll, we can probably pick up back there later, yep. but tell us where we are all right, right now. So this is where the whole ship is controlled. So okay. I'm usually standing up there on the bridge deck. Uh, so the bridge deck, is this a raised platform? And I can actually go up there now and show you. Yes, exactly. That's this. Oh, we'll, we'll yeah. So, as you can see, this is my viewpoint of the ship. Want me right here? Okay. All right. So, when we're standing here and you look out across the deck, that's amazing. you can really see everything that's going on right. uh, while we're sailing. Uh, also, getting the ship underway from the dock is really a nice uh, vantage point for that. Uh, and then uh, the helmsman will be right down here at the tiller. So we have uh, two helmsmen, one on the other side, uh, and it's a pretty big, heavy piece of wood, uh, and that's how we steer the ship. So I tell them, all right, I want you to do this. I want you to steer in this particular direction. We have our compass underneath there, so I'm either going to tell them a particular uh, compass course, okay. or I'm going to tell them where I want the rudder to be. Okay. So if I want to turn to the right, I tell them, you know, let's come right. Yeah. So, but I always joke about Niagara as being uh, voice activated <laughs> because I don't have to touch anything, and I just say it, and all these things happen. It's like so. Alexa. It's like the Alexa yes. of the, the ship. That's amazing. Because you think of like you would have this big like old steering wheel. Like, right. And apparently not. So how many helmsmen do you guys have down here? Like is there? So it's uh, it's always two. Okay. Always two. All yeah. right. How big is your crew? Oh, uh, it changes uh, depending on what program we're on. Okay. So I think on this program we're going to be around 40. Okay. Wow. That's so. amazing. Yeah, it's a full ship. Okay. All right. And actually I'll show you where everybody sleeps here soon. Yes. <laughs> and everybody sleeps on the berth deck in hammocks. That's uh, amazing. A history question. Back in the day when this was a fighting ship, is it true that there was more like a hundred sailors and marines and about when it was fighting, how many were on this boat? Yeah, so the complement in Niagara would have been 155 uh, and they all would have been living on board. And uh, the way that would work is there's two watches. So everybody got their own hammock, but not everybody got their own spot to uh, hang their hammock up. So if you're on deck, someone is down below sleeping, in the area that you would be sleeping. Uh, and then when that person comes up on deck, you get to go down below. So it's uh, it worked. Now remember, there wasn't an engine room then, uh, so there's a little bit more space on the ship, but they, were, they could fit, you know, 75, 80 people on the berth deck 
Uh, and then the officers still had their cabins back aft. So, yeah, it was 155. But these days, a full ship is in the 40s? 49 is our maximum for overnight. And on day sales, we have 100. Wow. That's so cool. cool. We'll, we'll go back down this way. All right. We'll Up here we have our capstan. So uh, this is a, another interesting tool that we use. So most people know what a winch is. Yes. So this is in essence nothing but a winch. Okay. Uh, just the the winch is much bigger. It's made of wood, and it's operated by people. Okay. So we have our capstan bars, which if you pan back there, those oh, I see. varnish things back uh, back there. We take all of those, there's ten of them, and put them in the little holes inside the capstan. And then anything that's really heavy, we can pick up with this. Okay. So you have 10 people all walking around. Uh, I think it was uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like maybe the third one, they called the Kraken. Yes. And they, they're running around yes. the capstan. Yes. That's what this is. That's amazing. Um, question about women's role on this ship historically and today. Uh, so in 1813, there weren't any women on board. Uh, now uh, the ship is actually mostly women. Uh, the crew, I think, is right now about 60 or 70 percent women. Wow. And that's just how it worked out this time around. <laughs> uh, there are, sometimes we have mostly men, sometimes we have mostly women. Uh, but the women on the ship are officers, they're deckhands. I mean, okay, my there's no real out. distinction there. But, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Capstan's pretty cool. And uh, we actually, the whole okay, ship is put together. Uh, using this. So all the really big heavy spars, which are those big pieces of wood up there, uh -huh. we actually wrap the uh, line around here. We have uh, a block, which is like a pulley, would be a loft, and we can place everything up that way. Wow. The anchors, how we uh, pick up the anchors using this. So we don't do anything uh, with any sort of engine or something right, like that. It's right. all done by hand. It's so cool. It's so old school, but you just get like such a sense of history and just yep. feel a sense of eerie pride on this ship. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Right, I'll cross over on this side. Um, talking about women, I meant to add this. Um, the Letty's captain is a woman, right? Yes. Okay. Yep, Allison Very. Taylor. Yes. Yeah, she sailed here in 2013 and 2014. Oh, okay. Uh, on Niagara. And then I was been trying to get her back ever since. <laughs> uh, so once uh, we had this ship uh, ready to go, or like we had to get a captain for that ship, I, she was calling me trying to figure out, hey, what should I do this summer? I was looking for a, a captain's job. And I said, I have just the ship for you. <laughs> That's so, amazing. So she'll sail the Letty then? Yep, she'll okay. be doing uh, the, the primary role of captain okay. on that ship. And then I'll be uh, leaving her every once in a while. Okay. You know, she can't work seven days a week. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so uh, the captain of Niagara, which is Captain Goldman. Okay. Uh, he's going to be uh, the primary captain in Niagara. Allison will be the primary captain on Letty. And then I believe both of them at all different times of the summer. Gotcha. Okay, so let's talk about what we are seeing now. Sure. This is our gun. <laughs> we have two of them. It's a 32-pound carronade. Uh, and uh, this thing is 100% real. There's nothing fake. There's nothing Hollywood about this. This is an actual weapon. Wow. Uh, that can and has fired actual, you know, Cannon round balls. shot. <laughs> which... I don't know where they are now. You're on here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Josh is uh, helping there us out go. here. So, you see the cannonball. as you can see right here, these are the different size balls. So, this right here is a 32 pound ball. This is the 24 pound ball. This is a 12 pound ball. Uh, so, if you add that up, that's what Josh is holding up right now. Uh, and uh, Absolutely. you can set it down. <laughs> so, this gun was designed to fire a 32 pound ball. That's why it's a 32 pound carronade. Uh, right now it's only bored out to fire the 12 pound ball, but uh, this is a, a really unique thing to have on a ship like this because this is one of the largest guns in the country uh, and really on any tall ship that I know of that's operating this much. And we fire this on every single day sale. Oh really? Every time someone comes on the ship for a sale, we, we fire off that's this gun. Amazing. So this weekend we sail Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll fire it off three times. Uh, Depending on where we are, uh, depend it's who ends up hearing it. So my father-in-law lives uh, over in my Lawrence Park, yeah. over by the golf course over there, and <laughs> he knows when Niagara's out sailing because we end up firing and things in his house start rattling. So it's pretty cool. It's amazing. But yeah, so 
Uh, these guns were operated by seven people, okay. with a gun captain and then six others to assist. Uh, and they'd also have a, a powder monkey. So it'd be like a 10 or 12 year old boy that would be running all the way down to the, the powder magazine, which is would have been right down there uh, where the engine room is now. So they're bringing all the powder up, they're bringing all the shot up, uh, they're kind of making all that stuff happen. Now the, what's also kind of cool about these guns uh, is their range. So most ships have these big, huge, long guns, and they're called yeah. long guns, uh, that could fire a couple of miles. The effective range of this gun was only a quarter of a mile, oh, wow. but you could fire a much larger shot with a smaller gun. So you'd have to get pretty close to another vessel to do some Right, damage. so it ends up being like this really close combat type of situation. Right. I don't think there's any way for us to really figure out what that would really be like. Right. I mean, I've heard one gun fire off with half a charge. I've never heard, you know, all 10 guns going no, off at yeah, once. Right. You know, and then all the guns going off in the other ship, right. that kind of stuff. So it's just a, I mean, it's really just a wild thing yeah, to think about. right. Okay, so 10 guns on on this ship, right? Uh, there'll be 20 guns, uh, 20. 10 on the other side. 10 on the other side. Okay, so. Yep. All right, are we, um, Chris, how are you doing on time? 10 20. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, so up here, uh, this is the foredeck. Uh, I like being up here because you can look back and see uh, most of the ship and kind of see just how tall it is and all the differences of all the different lines going in all these crisscross different directions. I always think it's kind of nuts uh, when you uh, look at and think about how many lines there are, where do they all go. So intricate. So when we put it together, it's simple. You know, it's one component at a time. Okay. One knot at a time, one line at a time. Uh -huh. When you look at it like this, it seems like an impossible thing <laughs> right. to put together. Right. Yeah. You want to go down below? Take a look, Johnny? Sure, let's do it. Yeah, we'll go actually. Uh, Makes you realize, you know, you read the stories of the ones who are starting to prepare in January. Oh, yeah. This is yep. why. <laughs> All right, we'll go down here. Okay. Just a, a reminder that we might lose you down here because of our Wi Fi signal, and if, if so, we'll see you back up top. But. <laughs> All right, we're going to go up to the galley first. So that's all the way forward. All right, so this is our galley. Uh, we have a fully functional kitchen. So all stainless steel. We got the triple sinks. Uh, but what's really unique is we still use a wood fire cook stove. Oh! So, so this is essentially where people live, or would live, have lived. Oh, yeah. So here you have our our cook stove. That's amazing. So we keep all of our firewood down below. And what's uh, people are saying that oh that's so dangerous. You have an open flame all the time. Yeah. But the thing is, if you think of like a propane or a gas or something like that, you have natural gas. Right. With all you have is like one you know one match and that goes off. And if you walk away from propane or natural gas. That, that flame continues on and on and on. Yeah. With wood, if you walk away, it just goes out. Right, very true. So it's actually a very safe fuel to use. Uh, so we fill the bilges with firewood. Okay, so all of the cooking is done there then. Yeah, everything. That's everything, amazing. all the prep work, everything is done here. That's great. Uh, we have our heads uh, on that side. Let's, can we see them? <laughs> Everybody wants to know what they look like. Yeah, everybody always wants to know what the head looks like, right? Oh my God, that's hysterical. So, there we go. Got our heads in here, and then it's a little tight uh, sometimes, but uh, it works. Right. The red lights are uh, at night, so we don't uh, ruin our night vision. Right. Because the ship actually operates 24 hours a day. Does it? I was gonna ask. Yeah, when we're out sailing, uh, we never stop. That's amazing. So we're continually moving and doing things. So does like, I mean, this is huge. Does the levee have quarters like this? Or not? Uh, it's not as big. Okay, well, yeah, obviously. We'll go back here a little bit. How tall is this yeah. deck? So it's only five feet of clearance down here. I probably could actually stand up. <laughs> so in, in between the deck means you can stand up. Okay, right, right, right. But underneath the deck means you it's can. only five. <laughs> yes, no, Chris, you don't You can't, Chris. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so all of those students you saw outside putting on those immersion suits, they all live in this space. Okay. And they're all in those hammocks. Wow. So we can put 30 hammocks down here. And everybody has to sleep in their hammock. Yeah. Everybody gets one of these sea bags. So 
It's a bit uh, interesting at first, right. a little bit more, a little bit difficult. Yeah. Uh, but once you get used to it, uh, people love it. I've had so many people ask me for canvas so they can actually make their own uh, hammock. Oh, that's amazing. So remind us historically how many people would have been down here at one You're time. You're talking about 75 to 80 people would be, or 70 people would be living in this space, sleeping down here. Uh, now they would have been hammocks would have been strung further forward and much further aft. Okay. All right. So and let's go through this way. We can head. We can head. Yep. <laughs> The hammock, again, was theirs for, basically for life. So, um, if they would have to be killed during the battle... Oh, wow. This is a lot larger than I anticipated. So, this is the wardrobe. Ooh. And so, this is where the uh, officers eat, so okay. the officers live. Okay. Uh, and in 1813, this actually was where the surgery was being taken place. Wow. Was right on top of this table. Well, not actually this table, <laughs> but one uh, very similar to it. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so the crew live and eat up forward. The officers live and eat back aft. Okay. And in 1813, it actually would have been very similar to this. So you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six cabins. Uh, so six people get a third of the ship. <laughs> And the other, you know, 149, right. the other two thirds of the ship. <laughs> uh, so definitely uh, with rank comes privilege, you know? Right. So you move from living in that open space and to living in something that is smaller than most people's closets. But it feels so luxurious now right. <laughs> that you've been promoted and now you get to live in this closet. So it's, uh, it's all relative. So let's talk broad terms. Um, sure. Billy, what's like a lot of people will ask, and one of the, the biggest things I hear is what's original on the ship and what have you guys done? Different? So, right behind you, those sort of ventilation slats, uh -huh. those are original pieces of Niagara. Wow. So, that tree was cut down in, you know, winter of 1813. That's amazing. And, or uh, 1812, 1813. Uh, those were actually the heartwood of some of the beams and things that were taken out of the original ship. There's also uh, 60 of the old frames that are sistered up, and there's there's uh, symbolic pieces. But this ship was new in 1988. Oh, okay. All this right. is actually the third, I guess? Fourth. Fourth. Can you quickly give us the history of Yeah. Sure. So the original was built in 1813, right here in Erie. Uh, the second one, uh, though I consider the second ship, they raised the first one, and there wasn't much left of it. Right. So they rebuilt that in 1913 for the centennial. Back up. Raised because it was sunk in Misery Bay after? Yeah, it was, it was sunk on purpose in 1820 uh, and left in uh, Misery Bay. Uh, it was actually, it wasn't named Misery Bay uh, because of that. It was named for a different reason, but uh, it was named Misery Bay from the winter of 1813-1814 because the ships were all over in Misery Bay and it was pretty brutal conditions. Wow. So they were walking across the ice to get into town and stuff like that. It was it was pretty miserable. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so 1813, uh, they, uh, 1913, they raised the ship, rebuilt her. And then they left her at the dock and she sank again. So uh, then in the 30s, they uh, brought her up again. Uh, and that was 1943, uh, I believe they finished that version of Niagara. So that would have been the third one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then by 1988, uh, the ship has been falling apart again. It was uh, sitting at the foot of State Street at that point uh, with water rushing right underneath it and just uh, beside it. So you could hear water rushing on the deck of Niagara. But, but not actually... Yeah, because yeah. it was, 19, it was uh, 1963 for the sesquicentennial of the Battle of Lake Erie. Uh, they, they put a rig in the ship. So you could actually see the ship and that had some sails on her every once in a while. Uh, and then in 88, they built this version. So we, this is, I, you know, I consider this Niagara 4. Okay. And um, then the next one's gonna be Niagara 5 um, when we start that. Okay, so. Should, shall we, can we yep. go upstairs and wrap her up? Some modern conveniences hidden away here and there. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> So the best thing to do is go to our website. Yes. Uh, our website's like going to tell you everything. Okay. Uh, but we're open for tours from 9 to 5, uh, pretty much any day the ship's in port. Uh, and then 
Uh, the public day sales, usually every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that we're here in Erie, Niagara will be going out sailing. Uh, and it's truly an amazing experience. You're out there for four hours. You really get to be a part of something that so few people really anywhere have ever done. So. Exactly. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, like he, like Billy said, go to the uh, the website to find out if the brig is here um, and take that public day sale. It's an eerie bucket list item. So um, thanks so much for joining us and thanks so much, Billy. We, I, yeah, I learned fun. so much, seriously. So thank you guys and have a great day. Madison, President Madison, that we need to fleet on the Great Lakes.